Hello, welcome to another toneless landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is a redo of a painting I did originally back in uh, February of 2014 called Evening Color. Um, I was actually fairly happy when it, at the time. It was pretty groundbreaking for me in a lot of ways. And actually, before I proceed, because I keep forgetting to do this, if you haven't liked this video, just use those mouse muscles. Or if you're on a tablet, use those finger muscles. And go go ahead and smash that little thumbs up there. Appreciate that. And if you're the guy that likes to not like the videos, do not do that action. You're too tired. <laughs> you're too tired. It makes no sense to me anyway. Why would anyone make the effort not to like this video? What do you want? You know, you're not paying for it, so just be thankful for your free uh, painting entertainment here. Anyway, I digress, as always. So, uh, you see me doing the drawing stage right now. Back then, I was not using black. I was mixing um, phthalo green with alizarin crimson. And see, so the neat thing about that was I could push it into a kind of greenish area or I could push it into a darker area that was always a bit purplish so um, this was actually also back when I was very uh, just getting started with the videotaping uh, which funny to 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 think now I've been doing that for five years you know um, and I've been painting since regularly since uh, 2000 and uh, well, I always say 2008, but it was really late in 2008, so we'll say 2009, that'll make it 10 years. And, um, and videotape, you know, the first five years, right? So, which is good, it's probably good, because uh, I'm much better now than I used to be. I've had little little strong ones here and there, but anyway, you can see now, what, uh, one of the things I was trying to do with this guy was I, I had really wanted to inject a lot of color at the time uh, 2014 I was uh, I had this idea that in my head that tonalism meant that things were like super subdued and sometimes that's true but the fact is you can get a heck of a lot of chroma in there um, but it has to have a tonal sort of harmony and I'm pretty sure this painting didn't actually qualify um, as tonalism per se um, but um, it was it was good for me in that uh, I, as I started moving out of this oh everything's gonna be kind of muted you know I was like actually I didn't even used to do sunsets if you can believe that with all the sunsets that, that I do I just thought oh they're kind of cliche you know um, <laughs> <laughs> but since that time, I've learned to embrace the cliché, yeah. You, the problem with clichés is not the cliché, the problem is the attitude um, about things like that. It's not a cliché if you are doing it with, um, with heart and intention, uh, then it becomes um, an archetype. How about that? <laughs> Uh, anyway, you see me progressing here, and most of the effort in this painting went into the sky. I believe that a, um, a larger version of this motif uh, also exists. I don't know if I ever actually got in and redid that, or maybe I sold it, or... <sighs> 2014 is getting to be a while back, but um, to me the whole point of this painting was the sky. I had um, big plans and uh, would actually still like to pull it off. I I felt like so much of the painting was good um, and I was not going to destroy it. I thought it was fine. But um, last year around uh, September, October, I'm going through uh, boxes of older paintings and uh, mostly 5x7s, um, of which I had a plethora since I was doing a lot of studies for almost every painting I was doing, I was doing a 5x7 study, but uh, I was like, nah, I want to I wanna do a major, major overhaul of these paintings and get some, get them in better shape. You know, <clears throat> in some cases I was taking something that was terrible and making it um, 
good. In other cases, it was taking something that was good and making it better, you know. So it could be a minor alteration or it could be major, but, um, oh, that leads me to the other point. Uh, this is going to be in my store, which is actually one of the reasons I'm doing this bonus video today. Uh, I just like to have the video in the store. So, um, it's going to be going for a good, a good, a good fair price. I sell the little ones for a fair price. I, I actually get the entire uh, gamut, but, um, in my store, I've decided to make things pretty fair, so uh, we've had some good, good um, movement there. And uh, go check it out. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I should mention I got a 100% guarantee. If you don't love your painting, I'll take it back, no questions asked. So that's also going to be that statement's on every page. So I want to reiterate that because I think sometimes that when people are buying things online, they're a little worried about that. So anyway, here we are, we're moving into, boom, 2018, October. And now the, you can see the overall tone is warmer, but that's just the weather coming through my skylight. So what I decided to do, I wasn't sure what I was going to do, is I just decided to hit this thing with um, a very strong uh, glaze of um, perline red, which you can see instantly transformed the painting and instantly sparked my imagination. I was like, ooh, wow, that blue's now purple. So what I'll go in after doing the um, uh, maximum glazing, also known as extreme glazing, uh, is I'll just start coming with passages of uh, opaque or semi-opaque color. Like there, I'm going, well, that looks like purple now. So let's go ahead and restate that as a purple, you know. And uh, what I love about the uh, extreme glazing process is that it allows me to really inject a lot of imagination into the work, which is something I'm doing anyway. Um, but uh, how can I put this? I I like to have a lot of control over my process, but doing something like extreme glazing really frees me up in a lot of ways because I get a little lost and um, and then sometimes I've got to get found and uh, so one of my ways of getting lost is to just pick a color and, and do an extreme glaze with it and then go okay let's work this out the other huge advantage of doing extreme glazing of course is you have tonal harmony instant tonal harmony Yes, you've also destroyed the painting uh, that was uh, there before, but uh, this little painting, I really loved uh, how it turned out with the reds and the, the golds and the purples. I think it's very rich, and uh, it's, in the, it's in my studio up on the wall right now, and uh, I've, had, I've actually had this in the hands of people that were very close to buying it, and then, you know, they, would, they you know, found something else they maybe liked a little better, but... Um, I love it, and uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, you know I have a, a big folder full of images that you know I put put aside to put up in the store, and I've decided that um, I want to do a little video for each, and I'll put them on YouTube as either a bonus video or, in a lot of cases, what I'm doing is um, just sending uh, these bonus videos out to uh, subscribers to my mailing list. Now, if you haven't done that. Well, you're going to be missing some videos, I reckon. You know, also, I do things for um, <clears throat> people on my mailing list, like special coupons, and um, I've got a lot of plans. One of, one of the... Uh, <laughs> I've got plans, but uh, it's only me, so let's not get too carried away. Uh, I have plans, but I also have a limited amount of time. But uh, one of my plans, getting back into my plans, instead of my problems, which you don't care about, I'm sure, um, is to maybe kind of do like a uh, a mailing that shows like what what videos uh, went out that 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 over that two weeks or something like that. <coughs> Pardon me. This is my second recording of this. I had so many problems with my throat the first time around that I like just bailed because I, I know it's annoying. Sorry about that. You know, what can I tell you? I don't know how be people on radio do it. I really don't. Anyway, so 
you can see uh, now we you know like how do you reconcile green uh, with red well you could rub a bunch of red over the top and then it becomes reddish green <laughs> and that gives us a color almost impossible to paint some of these colors would be impossible to paint but uh, you can come in and restate things opaquely I'm doing my little dark on the bottom thing which is which you know the great thing about that is that it puts a strong emphasis on the sky which is really the focal point uh, it's framed by the tree but I uh, you know I start getting real excited when I'm doing these uh, redos because uh, they're so liberating and um, uh, frankly exciting you know to, to me it's like I go wow okay that looks cool now I really like that you know and I still do and it's why it's in line in front of you know Oh my gosh, I don't know, 15 or so, maybe more other little redo paintings I'm getting ready to put in the store. And uh, I could just plop them all in the store, but I thought, eh, what's the fun in that? I'm going to do little extra videos. So today, Saturday, May 11th, and uh, home for lunch. And so, um, first of all, I had to track down the initial um, painting session, which, uh, like I said, was February 2014. I used to just on these redos just show the redo process because that's what's you know exciting and interesting to me but it occurred to me it might be great to just show the story of the entire painting you know uh, just have it all in one spot and so anyone that you know um, ends up getting the painting for their wall um, will have like a little record of like what that painting went through and I think that's interesting I would love that you know um, which is one of the reasons why I started doing the video in the first place it's just I love seeing people paint I love seeing the process you know yeah pardon me I had to pause uh, pause for a sneeze <laughs> oh the worries and troubles of living in New Zealand what gets me out here is the pine actually every tree out here is some kind of evergreen. Um, I used to get hay fever when I lived in California too, but that was more seasonal. Um, but so you can see basically I've, I've kind of got myself uh, decided I don't need that tree back there. I don't need that. That's not good. I only need two, two little fixtures and it was stronger for that. And uh, yeah, like I say, I'm pretty thrilled with this painting now and very happy to present it to you today. So Thank you for joining me today. If you liked the video, like I said, smash the like button. Just hit it as hard as you can. Let YouTube know that you liked it, and uh, maybe they'll let someone else watch it too. They'll put it, they'll put it in front of them. And say, hey, watch this one next, because because other people like this. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Also, as you know, it's in my store. There'll be a link underneath the video. Join the mailing list if you haven't already. If you want to, if you don't want to, please don't. You know because. I only want people on the list that want to be on the list. That makes sense. Uh, <clears throat> I'll be back. Oh, maybe tomorrow. <clears throat> Pardon me. With a uh, some sort of past master. So uh, stay tuned for that. And meanwhile, please take good care and stay out of trouble.